two people, Brian, asked very similar questions. Uh, P.G. Zamet and Gustavo Suchu both asked basically, what are the best inks for flex nibs or flex pens? Mm. And because we had two people ask that, I was like, well, we have to answer this one. Right? I mean, no, but at least two people will care about our answer. <laughs> but, <laughs> I think we do. I think we do, Brian. We're definitely more inclined to answer stuff if it's uh, something that seems to be popular and burning on people's minds. But yeah, there you go. fair enough. Um, yeah, you put some good notes in here. My first comment was I was going to second what you said. So I second. Oh, okay, well, I'll go ahead and, I'll I'll go ahead and throw this Drew out says. there so you can second it. All right, well, get ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get ready to be seconded. Yep. It really depends on whether or not your feed is up to the challenge of your nib. There mm. are a lot of modern flex nibs out there that are great, like really great. However, a lot of the times the feed is not manufactured with the same intentionality as the flex nib. Someone can make a flex nib, be like, this thing's gonna flex, it's gonna do all these things, and then we're gonna put it on this other nib that is supposed to be a catch-all. That's just not gonna be true because mm -hmm. the ink channel for, you know, a you know, something like an extra fine, you know, that can be super thin. But then if you're gonna demand a ton of ink from it, like using a flex nib, that ink channel is not gonna keep up. It's gonna be like, well, what are you doing? The 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 tunnel is not wide enough. You can't ask me for all this ink. I'm not gonna give it to you because I can't. This is a one-lane road here, buddy. You need at least a three-lane highway for all the ink that you're asking for, you greedy person. So, um, some 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 feeds. <laughs> let's like, flip there for a second. <laughs> some no 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 no. I have fully fully con full control. Uh, some feeds like Noodlers, like he intentionally makes a big honking ink channel. Oh yeah. Um, he, he grinds those all himself. And uh, with Ebonite, you can do that yourself, but. Mm -hmm. At your own risk. It's a little easier to do with ebonite than it is melty plastic. Yeah. Um, so if your feed is up to the challenge, then you can pretty much use anything. And you might even want to go with something a little bit more dry or something a little bit more viscous with some pigment to slow things down. Mm -hmm. You never know. Yeah. But many feeds are not up to the task. So if you do have a flex nib like what um, you'll see on the uh, Conklin and Monteverde OmniFlex nibs, you're probably going to want to go with something pretty wet because with those, you're dealing with just kind of a run-of-the-mill feed situation. And if you've ever looked at those feeds, you've got two tiny, tiny little ink channels um, going parallel, and they're not gonna they're not going to be able to keep up most of the time yeah so if you're uh, like flexing super hard yeah a lot of it's going to depend on your writing style the type of paper that you're using how absorbent it is you know flex is basically going to be like the most demanding you know ink performance that your pen could possibly require so some of it this is why you don't have like one universal answer to a question like this because people have different writing styles and it becomes like infinitely more variable when you add flex into the mix so you just kind of have to experiment a little bit yep and they do make uh, some inks, like Noodlers makes a couple inks that he formulated specifically for use in his flex pens, like Black Swan and Australian Roses. Mm -hmm. I, I think Navajo Turquoise might be one. Um, so mm -hmm. those inks are better for flex nibs because they have, like, all these are water-based inks. Well, most of them, anyway. Yeah. Um, so they have more water in them, like, and they're going to flow that's it's a it's a weird thing to say an ink is wet versus not wet because i mean we're talking about <laughs> liquid wet, here, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but some are more wet than others and that is because they just kind of have less stuff going on in them mm -hmm. they're more more water than not you know there's there are fewer th things in the ink that's going to slow down its movement mm -hmm. so a great way to do that is to just buy some samples give it a test, check it out. And we have a ton of reviews, really great reviews on our website. It even has sliders so people can select how wet it is. So if you trust your fellow man, fellow fountain pen user, then you can take advantage of those as well. There you go. Yeah, I kind of second what Drew said there. Um, experimentation is definitely going to be required. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, one of the Gustavo basically said, you know, the FA nib on the custom 912. So um, that's a pilot nib that they technically call that kind of a soft nib that's not necessarily advertised as a flex nib but it does flex quite a bit um so that eroshizuku inks usually are pretty good performers when it comes to flex and they're not like super duper saturated so you can usually get some nice uh color variation and things like that i think anything with good shading properties is gonna look pretty great in a flex pen 
Uh, like Drew said, Black Swan and Australian Roses by Noodlers is like an all-time favorite of mine. Uh, Nathan formulated that ink when the Noodlers Flex Pen first came out, kind of specifically for, you know, showing it off in a Flex Pen. So it does flow pretty well, but also it just looks really cool because it shades from like a black to a kind of maroon burgundy color. So that looks really good. Um, as far as the Roches you could go is I love Konpeki and Yamabudo. Those are both really good, but a lot of the, the colors look great. Um, I love Diamine Marine. It's nothing special about that necessarily as a flex pen ink, but uh, it just gets great shading. Uh, Drew mentioned Navajo Turquoise. It's right in that same, you know, kind of vein in terms of its shading. Navajo, Navajo Turquoise is a little like bluer. Uh, marine is a little greener. Uh, so I like both of those. Anything in kind of the turquoise family, I find tends to shade pretty darn well. Uh, I love Noodler's Apache Sunset that is like an all-time just shading champion. And I think it looks really great, especially because you get some of that similar effect like you do with the Black Swan Australian Roses. Not only do you get shading, but you get almost like a, a hue change, kind of like an ombre effect from like a red to an orange to a yellow with that Apache Sunset, depending on how much ink it puts down. So you can really get some cool effects. You know, when everything works well with Flex, you can get some really, really cool effects, not just with the line variation, but with also some of the shading and stuff. It's pretty rad. Um, and then this one can be really hit or miss, but the shimmering inks, some of those you can get some similar properties or anything with a heavy sheen to it. You know, basically any ink that you have that has, you know, a property to it where you, if you put it down really heavy, it has something unique that happens to it. You know, the heavy sheeners and the shimmer inks are both fall into that category. Um, so Urban Emerald of Shavor falls into that group. Um, these, you know, you're going to be pushing the limits with some of these properties. Some of the flowier flex pens, like the Noodlers ones, um, will generally handle these types of inks a little better. If you have something like Drew said, that is maybe tends to starve a little bit when you flex it out, the feed doesn't quite keep up putting anything that has any type of pigmentation or shimmer or something in it that will kind of exacerbate those issues a little bit so you're going to be into even more considerations in terms of slowing down you know making sure the thing is cleaned out not drying out that kind of thing uh, but you can get some really cool effects with it so i think anything that has unique properties you're going to draw more of those properties out with a flex pen so you know basically whenever you're getting into flex things are not going to go perfectly you're pushing the limits of the pen you're getting to some unique stuff there's more variables so just be prepared prepared for that. And if you can be patient and kind of learn the nuances of it, you can have a lot of fun and do some really cool things that you can't do with any other pen and you can have an absolute blast. Indeed. And taking off my Goulet hat and putting on my fountain pen user hat, Gustavo, I own a 912 as well and uh, wasn't having an ideal experience with it. My feed wasn't able to keep up with my um, bounciness. So I went to a website called flexiblenibfactory.com and I bought a aftermarket ebonite feed which almost certainly voided my warranty so keep that in mind but you can actually select on yeah. this person's website between a two channel and a three channel so you can really get a gusher if you want to um they're only like 30 bucks or something like that so that's an option if you want to go that route there you go no affiliation there you go good stuff it, yeah it absolutely voids your warranty if you're <laughs> swapping out the parts of your pen but hey yeah it's worth it right you gotta, you gotta risk it big if you wanna win big, I guess. Are you winning? Mm -hmm. Are you winning big? I don't know. That's not. I, I felt like I was, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice.